KPR live in Wingap, Pennsylvania. We're on Route 512. On the right hand side, you'll see this is a Turkey Hill. Uh, like I, once again, I grew up in this area for many, many years. Um, my grandparents, my parents, they all grew up in Wingap, Pennsylvania. And my grandparents came from Italy. Uh, and we've been here a long time. I know many, many people. My father knew many people. We know what goes on in this town itself. Now keep in mind, Fatula Gulan's uh, followers and possibly soldiers own at least 50. They rent and own at least 50 homes. Uh, we have proof on that. Now on the left-hand side, you'll see the Wingap Post Office. And we're driving up to Fatula Gulan's compound right now. Also keep in mind, uh, Wing Gap is a very small town. Uh, it's not a big town. It's a, they have, we have some businesses. Uh, at one time, this was run by mills where they make clothes over the years. We just passed a mill that was there. That you know, People would go in there and do sewing, and uh, they used to make blouses and over the years. Uh, Wing Gap is, a, a, like I said, a small town. And who would ever think the United States would bring in uh, someone from another country, which is now the number one terrorist out of the country of Turkey and possibly the, the, the number one terrorist throughout the world. He's considered worse than Osama bin Laden, but the, the people of the United States don't really know about this person. Uh, okay, as, I just get, let's get back to the road here. As we're coming up, uh, you'll see this is... Uh, we're coming up to overpass. Now, keep in mind, this is the Appalachian Trail, which comes from Georgia to Maine. Uh, you're, we're in Pennsylvania, and we're going under the underpass. This is called Route 33, uh, which is located in uh, Wing Gap, and now, but now we're entering Sailorsburg. Now, Sailorsburg is a very small rural area, mostly wooded. It has some businesses, but not many. Uh, I, like I said, uh, I know many people that live next to Fatula Kulan. I know my friends live in Sailorsburg. I know I know pretty much what goes on at the camp. Uh, and as you see, we'll be driving on Mount Layton Road shortly. But let's get back to the road. Uh, this, like I said, you don't see many homes here, businesses. It's mostly wooded area. Uh, now, keep in mind, I've been investigating this for many, many years, but over the years, I didn't have time to do the investigation because, you know, when you're busy working and, and doing things, you don't have time to do this. But the past two or three years, I've been investigating pretty heavily. Okay, so now you'll see there's a place on the left and right there. Right there on the right, they used to have plays there, movies uh, over the years. Uh, these are big fields to your left and right. Uh, we'll be coming, like I said, we'll be making a left on Atula Gulan's uh, beautiful compound. Uh, it's uh, They call it a camp, but people don't realize they do shoot semi-automatic weapons on the property. Uh, it was, we have witnesses that they saw people shoot with their guns at women's dresses on telephone poles or possibly trees uh, with uh, shooting uh, machine guns, or what you call AK-47. Now we're coming down to the road to the left. Now some of these properties to the left now are owned by Fatula Gulan. Uh, there's a person they call him the Turk. Uh, he has he has you know animals there where they sell the food to the local restaurant. It's uh, they they call that alami. They cut the throat of the animal and then they sell it to pizza places and other restaurants. Okay, so let's get back. We're making a left on Mount Eaton Road right now. And you'll see we're, we're going to be coming down to a couple houses right now on the left. Now, one of these houses here will be knocked down eventually. And they're talking about putting a road coming out of Fatul Gulan's compound. Uh, other than the road he, he has already coming to the entrance. Now, right there, see that house on the right? There's a pickup truck there. That is owned by Fatul Gulan. Uh, not the last owner, but the previous owner. Uh, she has a lot of, uh, she saw a lot of corruption going into the camp over the years, and uh, but that is now owned by Fatula Gulan. As we're driving down here, uh, we're gonna pull over a little bit, so just bear, bear with us. Okay, so now we're entering, we're gonna, we're still on Mount Eaton Road. Down here on the left, this is, there's a big house. It was purchased back in 19, or 2001, uh, 
supposedly by Fatullah Gulen's uh, real estate people. Right there it is. See where that big plant? We just passed it. Uh, they pay nine thousand dollars per year in property tax, and um, they never take care of the property itself. It, the grass is so high; it's terrible. Uh, a lot of people come in from Texas, Connecticut. Now we had; they do have local, you know, maybe three or four cars that stay there all the time. But just keep in mind: on July the sixteenth, this was after the coup. There was at least thirty to fifty. Uh, Cars, or maybe I'm sorry, 15 cars parked in, at that house that we passed on the left. Uh, they, I don't know if they were celebrating after the coup, but uh, we have eyewitnesses. The neighbors uh, would drive by, and they would see many, many cars that took place after the coup. Now, keep in mind, before the coup took place, there was a lot of traffic going into this camp. The neighbors noticed uh, a lot of vehicles going into the camp, but this. This happens all the time, but there was many, many cars going in and out of the camp prior to the coup. Uh, but you know, like it seems like the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about this because it seems like they're protecting Fatulu Gulan for some reason. Uh, we know the reasons, but the American people don't know the whole truth. So we're going to be coming up uh, again to Fatulu Gulan's compound. And like, keep in mind, Fatulu Gulan was brought to this country back in, I think it was 1997 or 99. 